Graham. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How you doing? I'm doing very well. So, well, Thanks. thank you very much for being here. I was just handed a uh, list of some of your films. This is your uh, filmography, I guess they call it. Uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's right. A fantastic motion picture. Valley Girl, Rumble Fish, The Cotton Club, right. Birdie, Peggy Sue Got Married, Raising Arizona. Another great movie. Thank you. Thanks. Moonstruck. Right. With our friend Cher. Honeymoon in Vegas, a great movie. Very entertaining film. Thank you. Guarding Kess, It Could Happen to You, Leaving Las Vegas, another Las Vegas movie, okay. for which you won an Academy Award. The Rock, Con Air, Face Off, City of Angels, Adaptation. Oh, well, thank you. Another Oscar nomination. Thanks. Pretty impressive uh, body of work there for well, you. I appreciate that, Dave. Thanks for um, point, pointing it all out. Well, I, I was very impressed when I saw it. Well, thanks. How, how was your summer? Did you do anything uh, special? Well, eventful? actually, it's funny you should, you should uh, ask me that because you, you, you know I have an interest in zoology, I, I think, and uh, I, just, I just acquired uh, two king cobras. Oh, my God. Uh, a male and a female, and the female's name is Shiva. And the male's name is Moby because he's an albino, so it's like Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have them behind uh, two computer locked doors behind bulletproof glass. And I, um, I like to go in there. Well, actually, if they bite me, I, I won't get bit. But if they do, I've got 15 minutes to live. So I have to get like an antidote, which is next to the cage. And I just plunge into my knee, and I'll be all right. That's not going to happen. But uh, I like to go in there in my red leather chair, you know, with a glass of wine, and, and watch them as, as they're watching me. And sometimes Moby will sort of do this little charming snake dance and show his back to me. He's got this like little round circular pattern on the back of his, uh, his back and he's doing this dance and every now and then I'll just turn around and go, you, I want to kill you. So after that, I have to just sort of kind of, I say goodnight, kids, and I, I go upstairs, I have to lie down and think about what just happened. <laughs> My God. Wow. It's, it's, like, it's kind of like driving 190 miles per hour in a sports car with a, with a scotch. It's the adrenaline level goes up. You know? uh -huh. uh -huh. My, I didn't, I didn't realize that about you. Uh, I actually discovered this about me this summer recently, uh -huh. so, but I, I, I do, I, I like all kinds of animal life, yeah. I always have, and well, I think they're beautiful. Be, be very careful. I, I will, yeah. thank you. Now, uh, you, you've been making uh, movies for a long time, as, as we ran down some of them in your career. Uh, how did it begin? Is it the kind of thing where when you were a kid, you knew automatically you wanted to be a, an actor or in films or connected to films? I, I, was, I, I distinctly remember I was six years old, and I was sitting on the uh, living room carpet trying to figure out a way to get inside the TV set because life in the TV set seemed so much more interesting to me than what was happening uh, at home. And so I thought, well, how can I get in? They had the million dollar movie mm -hmm. at that time. Now movies cost a lot more now, but I wanted to be a part of the mil million dollar movie. So that was my first recollection of wanting to be an actor. And then when I was 15, I, 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 uh, I started working at the Fairfax movie theater selling popcorn and tickets at the concession stand trying to figure out how to get from the stand to the screen. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be in film. Right. And I had idols, heroes like Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson mm -hmm. and James Dean and Eastwood and, and that's really what I wanted to do. Right. But still in all, uh, even though you're in a theater watching movies and selling popcorn, it's an enormous leap then to actually being in the... <laughs> Well, that, that's how were you able? How were you able to take that next step? Well, that, well, that's, but that that was where the dreaming came in, and the desire and the power of imagination is yeah. really what kind of motivated me. But even when I was eight, I was making uh, home movies with my brother was Christopher, that right? and he uh, he would make these little films with a Super 8 camera, and they were very intense because I'd be I was eight years old, he was ten, and we did this picture called the Unknown Circus. I, I call it a picture, but it's it's just a tiny little eight millimeter home movie, mm -hmm. but I played a trapeze, uh, no, I, I played the uh, tightrope walker, and he was a trapeze artist that was jealous of me, and he was shooting me with a gun because of something involving a girl. Mm. This is going on when we're like eight and mm -hmm. ten. Mm -hmm. So it was... Uh, pretty advanced, pretty really. Pretty advanced, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and what did the snake say to you again? <laughs> Thank you.
Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, and he's, he's done it several times, <laughs> yeah, well, so I know it quite well. He said, <laughs> you, I want to kill you. Okay, thank you. I just want to clarify. You want to tell us about your first professional a acting experience? Was that difficult for you? Was that uh, easy? I mean, the, the fact that you, you, you were part of the Coppola family, was that a, a boost for you, or did you, that work against you in an odd well, way? Well, I mean, I, I wasn't really aware of really what Francis had done when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Then I went and I visited him in Lake Tahoe, and he was shooting Godfather too. and that's when I started to realize something was up. Right. Because uh, there was all these amazing... <laughs> People there and Al Pacino listening to classical music and it just it was it was kind of a wonderful time for me. Um, yeah, but so th that's pretty much the only time I had that kind of experience yeah. with them. Well, it must have been a very heady experience for a kid. It, it was actually. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, now I started talking about uh, matchstick men, right. but we don't want to give too much away about the story. Yeah, there's a lot of twists and turns. Yeah, but but uh, tell people what we can tell uh, about the film. Well, I play a I play a man who's a lonely man, and he has a he suffers from agoraphobia, and he's also a con artist, mm -hmm. and uh, he has never been a, uh, a, a parent, and suddenly this young lady shows up in his life, beautifully played by Alison Lohman. Yeah, she's, she's a 14-year-old girl, terrific. she plays my daughter. <laughs> Very appealing in the part. Yeah, and I have no, I have no experience being a parent, and I'm, I'm confronted with this and, and rather frustrated, which is where I think the humor comes in, that I don't know how to interact with mm -hmm. her as a dad. Right. And, and she sort of, uh, and maybe this is saying too much, she, she takes to the profession kind of readily. I start it? to put her on the grift, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I don't feel so so great about it. He's in kind of denial about being a con artist. Right. You know, he says uh, people give me their money. I don't take it uh -huh. from them. <laughs> well, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, good luck with the movie, and uh, by God, good luck with the snakes, for heaven's yeah. sakes. Well, I'll try not to get bit. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Nicholas Cage, everybody. Love to ride back with Alton Brown.